I'm Primal Piggy. Thank you for joining me for another BDSM United podcast. Self-collaring. Wow. That's kind of a loaded topic. Self-collaring is where the S type, the submissive type of person, will collar themselves. This is usually done to express self-love or taking ownership of their own submission after a bad relationship to help heal and ground themselves before getting back into looking for a dominant type partner. This is fairly new, and for the most part, it's only recognized by the new generation. We can understand, we can even back up the motive behind self-collaring. Sometimes you need to heal and love yourself a little more. That isn't special. It's pretty standard in every lifestyle, even in the vanilla lifestyle. We can't, however, back up the actual act of self-collaring or referring to an item as a collar if you bought it yourself for yourself. That is not collaring. Let me repeat that. That is not collaring. If you buy an item for yourself, it's just a piece of jewelry. It's not a collar. Uh, If a dominant type did not give you the collar, it's not a collar. It's just a piece of jewelry. It can be special to you. It can have meaning to you, but it is a piece of jewelry. Collaring is a symbol of ownership from a dominant to a submissive. It is the dominant showing ownership over the submissive, and the collar belongs to the dominant and is put on the submissive. It can also show the commitment and dedication of the dominant. And that level of commitment and dedication they have to their submissive and to the dynamic, to the relationship, to the power exchange relationship that they are a part of together. The submissive accepts the collar as a symbol of being owned by the dominant. They're not allowed to serve another, not at least without the permission of the dominant. There are certain things within the lifestyle, within our BDSM culture, that are sacred. And a collar is one of them. Not just the collar, but also who gives it to who. Who owns it and the meaning behind it. And really, this isn't up for debate. There are other types of collars like training, consideration, protection, and play. These are all valid collars. They all mean something a little different, but the bottom line is the same. The dom owns it, the sub earns it, and is honored to receive it. We'd like to add, not everyone wants to collar someone or be collared by someone. It's a personal preference. Collars shouldn't really be taken lightly. It should be looked at as a serious and a lifetime commitment, or at least a commitment for the life of your power exchange relationship. You can serve your dominant if you're a submissive without a collar. You can dominate your S-type without ever collaring them. Just like some people don't want to get married, but they still date and they have legit valid relationships. We're asking that people who uh, are a part of BDSM respect our history, our traditions, our, and our rituals that are part of BDSM. It's helped shape the traditional BDSM that we talk about on this podcast and in our various resources. Do yourself a favor and do lots of research. And if you don't understand, ask an educator. Ask somebody who is knowledgeable about BDSM. Just a note that often comes up with collaring. While the commitment level may be similar to a wedding ring, A collar within BDSM is far different. Marriage, especially egalitarian modern marriage, is a power-neutral dynamic. That is that both persons 
though committed to one another, remain autonomous. They have a personal autonomy. Hollering, on the other hand, is a symbol of a power exchange. One cannot collar themselves because no power is exchanged. Let's look at uh, a couple other collars here. A protection collar is a symbol of giving up protection to another person. A consideration collar is a symbol of working towards a potential power exchange. A training collar is a symbol, a symbol of temporary power exchange leading to a permanent power change as someone learns the uh, lifestyle and learns the what is pleasing and, uh, and uh, for the master. A permanent collar is a symbol of power or authority exchange. Um, a bondage collar isn't really a collar. It is just a piece of bondage equipment. Therefore, it is just a tool. There's not a meaning uh, of behind a bondage collar. It's just like a set of restraints or uh, a piece of rope or um, just anything you use to restrain or to control someone in a play scene. So a bondage collar, even though we call it a collar because it physically goes around someone's neck, it, doesn't, it isn't uh, included in what we're talking about here. And when we say that one cannot collar themselves, we're saying that words have meanings. In the absence of power exchange, whatever pretty necklace or bondage equipment you're putting on yourself to make yourself feel better about yourself, well, that's not collaring. I'm a pagan type of person. I love rituals. Buy a piece of ribbon or rope wherever you like and charge it with your intentions. It's, it's all good. Get the healing you need. But it's still not collaring. If you walk around telling people you're collared because you try to collar yourself, you're still not collared. You're just being deceptive. As long as you're autonomous, you have personal autonomy, you're not collared. I'm Primal Piggy. Thank you for joining me for another BDSM United podcast uh, where we're talking about self collaring. Because someone will get confused, again, I'll say bondage collars used by tops and bottoms in kink scenes are something totally different. They don't symbolize anything outside of the scene. They may be used in a role-play kink or in a bondage scene to restrain a bottom. Also, we're not talking about anything that looks like a choker or a fashion item. That's just a piece of jewelry. And in a lot of different popular fashion, uh, some people like to wear a tight choker-type necklace, and that's just a piece of jewelry. It always is, and we're not knocking anyone for wearing any kind of jewelry that they find fashionable and fashionably pleasing. We're just talking about self-coloring and, and how it is disrespectful to traditional BDSM. Uh, BDSM United teaches nonviolent, consensual, traditional BDSM education. We've always been a traditional podcast, and uh, all of our resources have always been traditional. And we recognize that we live in modern times, and we practice a modern form of BDSM. It doesn't look exactly like how it always has looked. Yet we're a legacy of people who came before us, and we try not to disrespect them and disrespect the things that they put into place, things that have worked well for years. So we're not trying to change things. We're trying to live in a modern world uh, as traditionally and traditionally respectful as we can. Thank you for joining me today. It was a joy bringing this topic to you, and I'll talk with you again soon.